it's it's a very interesting place to work for um, for a number of reasons. It is NASA, and it's such a I feel like I'm part of something very big here. Our jobs in a whole, we have three phases of this of what we would deal with with the crew. They have their pre-flight phase, which they are assigned to a flight and they are training for that specific flight and we would take them through strength conditioning regimen to prepare them physically for that flight. Once they are in flight, we are responsible for their exercise prescriptions on the three devices, the, the cycle ergometer, the, the treadmill, and the weight training device behind me. And when they return to Earth, we have a program that we put them through to recondition them back to their pre-flight standards. Um, it's similar to what you would see in a rehabilitation of an injured athlete. It's not really an injury per se because they're not injured, they just have a diminished capacity in some areas of performance. But we just we still take them through that phase, it's a progressive phase. And then we have the group of people that are not really assigned yet or have been assigned previously and already gone through their, their reconditioning and we're really there to maintain their health status or to keep them fit. So those are really the four phases. If you consider it similar to athletics, you'd have a preseason, an in-season, a postseason, and then like an off-season. So one of the key trainings that the astronauts do when they're training for space is going and training EVAs as the most arduous or hard task they will do pretty much in all of their space flight experience. So when they go and they launch and they're there for six months, if they're lucky, they'll be able to perform an EVA. And they've been training their whole career for these EVAs. And when they go outside, what's similar is we train it here in the neutral buoyancy lab. And so when we watch the astronauts come out, they'll have a liquid cooling garment on underneath. So essentially it looks like long underwear with tubes running through it. And that's sending cooling liquid to keep them nice and cool when they're in the suit because they're working hard in a closed environment. So the suit um, presents some unique problems to the astronaut because they, uh, they have, first of all, they have to get in the suit and that's kind of a tight fit and sometimes the suit is set on the stand and sometimes when they have to get in, they're kind of, they have to almost contort themselves to get into the suit and, and they've gotten hurt getting in sometimes. Um, they want a tight fit on the suit so it's hard to get into. They want a tight fit because that makes it better able for them to do their job um, when they do the spacewalk. Also the suit actually takes your shoulders and rotates them forward just, just the way the suit is and the way it works and um, the way the bearings are and so sometimes if your shoulders are rotated forward and then they're trying to do different activities um, you obviously that can present a problem for the shoulder when it's already rotated out of position and you're taking the scapular motion out of um, some shoulder stuff and having them try to get overhead. There's a lot of issues that we have to deal with because of space flight and because of the fact that they're working in a zero gravity or microgravity environment that you just don't ever see on Earth that you would deal with. When an astronaut returns from space, they are basically experiencing what we would call a readaptation as soon as they start hitting a gravitation from, from the Earth. So it's, it happens when they're still in a capsule and they're still screaming through the sky ready to land, okay? They're starting to slowly feel gravity upon themselves. When they land, they're at 1G, one gravity, and they feel like the whole weight of the world is, is just sitting on top of them. They're not used to feeling any of this gravity. It feels like there's an elephant on their chest. Their arms feel like they weigh a ton. Their legs don't want to move. But they can, they can still do it because they do still have, do have this strength that they've you know, maintained while they're in space. But the feeling of all that gravity acting on them is, is really hard on them. And when you consider the other issues that, that go on, whether it's balance and issues and near vestibular issues and the dizziness, um, maybe some nausea, um, those are things that we have to work around when we start doing our reconditioning program. Yeah, when they come back from space, they definitely have um, balance and appropriate reception issues. Um, a funny story that I like to tell about one of the um, crew members that came back from, uh, I don't remember, I think it was three or four month mission. We were getting ready to go out and do his reconditioning and he picked up a banana off the table and he went like this and set it right there and it just fell straight to the ground. And we laughed at him because, you know, that's pretty funny. Yeah, ha ha. So he picks it up and he puts it back up and he does it the exact same thing again. I mean, he did it like three times in a row just because 
they're so used to being able to set things in different spots and then they turn around do something and then come back and it's right there because in space that would happen um, in space the the inner ear stops working basically because there is no gravity and um, so when they come back it's the same issue they're used to not having to to balance themselves and now they do they have to balance themselves and so some of them do great some of them you know come back and adapt right away some of them it takes a little bit while for them to get used to things they they round the corners kind of funny they um, you know they don't have any you know if they if they try to throw something it just drops right down because they're used to having a big you know not as much force um, what we do in, in reconditioning is we try to really stress their proprioception and that causes it, to, of course, to come back um, earlier. So basically, we use a lot of balance activities and as much as we can right from the get-go. So in coming from a tr more traditional setting to NASA, uh, I think looking at, at where athletic training is going and some of the emerging settings is, is pretty amazing that we're all athletic trainers. We can take this skill set that we've all learned and be able to apply it to the human. Um, NASA is just another way of applying those skill sets to human performance. My advice to someone who's a student is don't be afraid to apply your athletic training principles to something that you, that's something new, to something different. Because that's basically when I got here that's what I did. I applied what I knew from athletic training and applied it to reconditioning an astronaut that just came back from three months of space flight. So um, I think that if you can take those principles and apply them, then that might be something worth pursuing. You know, it's always nice as an athletic trainer when you're in a traditional setting and, and you've taken an athlete from, from an injury and gotten them back and then they've achieved their goal. They always pull you aside and, you know, if you're lucky, say thank you. Well, it's the same thing with the astronaut population. We, we get those same, you know, same thanks from them as well. But there's, you know, some cooler perks. Our thanks happen to come in phone calls from space.